Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. And today we're looking at Android P. So the Android P developer preview one just dropped today from Google in a bit of a surprise. And uh, we've got it up and running on a phone. Of course we do. We want to show you everything that we found so far that's new. Talk about some of the changes that Google has implemented that we may not see initially, but just so that you're aware of them. But hey, look, we've got new stuff to play with, and this is what we enjoy the most about Android. So let's dive into this. This is what's new in Android P. Not to start this off on a low note, but Android P, kind of like Android O, we're just getting subtle changes so far. There isn't anything truly groundbreaking, at least up front, that we've seen. Uh, this is Android Preview, Android P Developer Preview 1, though. So we've still got 2, 3, 4, 5, and all that before stable hits, probably sometime in Q3. So Google can obviously change lots of stuff. We've actually seen changes happen from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 before. Sometimes things get backed out, then re-added. So anything can change at this moment. Um, but this is the first build. This is our first look at Android P. If you want to install this, you probably shouldn't. But if you really, really want to, you can install it on a Pixel, Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL, and Pixel XL. I know that's way out of order, but this is a Pixel XL running it. There's a Pixel 2 regular Pixel and Pixel 2 XL. So you can install it on these four devices. That's it at this time. And that makes sense. These are essentially the, the devices Google is supporting going forward. So uh, anyways, you can flash this manually. This is an alpha build. You cannot install this through the Android beta just yet. Uh, but when we get to preview 2, 3, 4, and 5, that obviously will probably change so more people can start testing this. This is really just a developer build, though, so they can start building out these new app experiences and features and things like that. Uh, anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's, let's finally dive on. On in here. To get started, we'll kind of just run through Google's list of stuff uh, that they want to at least point out to developers. And then we'll get into some of the UI changes and all of the fun stuff. So uh, one of the biggest things is display cutout support. So we've talked about this a lot. Android, or I should say Apple's iPhone 10 created this little notch thing up there in the top of the display. And Android manufacturers seem to be willing to just copy that completely. Uh, now I know Essential created the notch first, but we're seeing everyone decide to clone Apple's version of it. So that's why we keep comparing that, by the way. Anyway, there's now native support for notch cutouts. And there's some adjustments up here that you'll notice um, will take advantage of that. And I'll show you that here in just a minute, how that notch support works. But anyways, they've, they've built it out so developers can start testing to get their apps ready for the wave of phones upcoming that will have notch support. Um, they included indoor positioning with Wi-Fi RTT. And that's essentially a developer thing where developers can now take advantage of Wi-Fi RTT within their apps to help pinpoint locations while indoors better. So a map app within a mall or something, you could really pinpoint someone's location within there. So it's a developer thing. In terms of notifications, we do have some changes, and I'm going to show you some of these in, in just a second here, but uh, smart replies are still built in and, and probably a little bit more advanced now. But there's some other things where notifications will now highlight who is sending you what, where their name is up front with their emoji or their avatar, that sort of thing. It's just more apparent, I should say. And then you can display things like full pictures in there rather than cutoff versions. Um, so that stuff's changing, including the way they all look a little bit. Um, those are kind of the two big ones that 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 we'll probably talk the most about over time. But HDR video is now um, a a system thing within Android. So as 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 we see manufacturers continuing to build out HDR support, uh, that's now native to Android P going forward. So that's kind of a big deal for video um, video folks, and, and that should be with YouTube, Google Play TV, whatever app. Um, is doing it. So there's is there's also an autofill framework update where Google hasn't necessarily specified how they've made changes, but autofill, you know, it's it's native now where if you're in an app and you need a password pulled up, it can pull that up from your Google account or say uh, Dashlane or LastPass, one of those. They've improved that. They didn't necessarily say how, they just said multiple improvements. Uh, those are kind of the big things outside of uh, multi-camera support. So they're going to do some multi-camera tricks where you can access multi-feeds at the same time using multiple cameras, that sort of thing. They haven't given us a ton of details there, uh, but that's sort of the stuff they announced. Um, with that out of the way, let's now get back into the stuff that you guys probably want to see, which is actual UI changes and tweaks. And with that, I'll start first with this new launcher. I don't know if you've noticed, but this launcher is different than what you're running on your Pixel phone now. And that's really just this bottom area. So you can see there, it's kind of more of a panel that now lays on top of your home screen. Whereas in the past, it used to be just sort of this area that you swiped up to reveal um, an app drawer. This is probably some material design tweaks coming, but you can see there's kind of a shadow there. Um, this is actually a panel that now is kind of swipes up over the top of 
um, your home screen. Subtle tweak, but it is there. You also notice that there is a mic button down there at the bottom. So the Google search bar previously just had that Google logo and you tapped on it to search, but there's now a mic button there. I don't know why it's necessarily there. I mean, you can still long press on home and that will um, launch Google Assistant for you, but there is a mic button there and that'll that'll kick off those Google searches as well. Um, you can long press on things. You still have um, the notification dots with um, these quick looks at notifications. So that stuff is still there. That hasn't changed much. You can swipe over here to get to your, well, let's just call it the Google feed. It's no longer called Google now. Um, so pretty minimal stuff there with this new launcher. And we actually posted this launcher up at the site because you can install it right now. Um, for example, I have it up and running here on my Pixel 2 XL, which is running Android 8.1. So you can see it is up and running there. And you can really sort of see that uh, that 3D layer that it's created on top of on this phone anyway. So anyway, that is up and running. Um, if we jump into settings, I'll just show you that none of this stuff's really changed. You got notification dots, you got at a glance, you can change... Um, icon shapes. So um, nothing's really changed there. Um, but as a new launcher, if you do want to install this, it seems to work on 8.1 devices uh, without issue. Um, so let's dive into some of the, the actual things here that have changed. You'll notice right away when I swipe that down, this notification area looks a lot different than it has in the past. So a completely different UI. Uh, everything's kind of in the same spot, but you can tell it's more of this uh, rounded corner. I, I get the feeling we're gonna see lots of rounded corners in Android P. So rounded corner UI to everything. And that notification area is just quite a bit different here. Um, so you can still expand notifications um, and you will see uh, they still look mostly the same. Uh, Android P just dropped apps are going to have to update to adopt to their uh, the new styling and things like that. So these don't really look that different, I don't think, from Android O. And you can see how this picture is cut off that I sent myself. In Android P, if it's supported properly, it should show the full picture, not that cutoff version. That's one of the things. Um, and then we'll also get more smart replies, assuming apps want to support that thing. Um, so smart replies will be there as well. Um, and that's kind of what notifications look like for now. Uh, we can still swipe over and snooze them and jump into settings on them. Um, you can also still long press on them and you'll get a way to quickly stop notifications or keep showing them. Or there's also an info button which will get you into that app setting. So all that stuff's there. It, it's slightly tweaked, but for the most part, it's kind of still exactly what you would expect. Um, if we uh, swipe further down here, though, this is your quick settings Um tiles panel, if you want to call it that, it is no longer a horizontal paginated thing. Um, the more quick tiles you add, you can see they sort of just live in this card up top and actually just vertically scrolls up and down. So, whereas you can see over here, it's that old paginated style. So you swipe between pages of these quick settings. Again, this one scrolls up and down. Um, you also notice there are blue indicators over each to show you that they're on. So like if I turn flash light on, you see that goes blue. Same with night light. Um, on this old version, it just kind of grays each thing out to show you um, that they are indeed active. So pretty, pretty substantial changes there in terms of UI. I mean, vertical scrolling, we actually have color indicators, things like that. That's not, I know it's not like groundbreaking stuff, but these are changes. You also notice some other layout changes, and I'm just going to set this back down. But uh, date and time, are up there in the top left corner, whereas on the regular um, Pixel 2 XL with running 8.1, it's just um, carrier up there in that top, or if you have airplane mode, and then date is down here in the bottom left. Um, carrier now goes to the bottom left in Android P, and that's actually a little scrolling area. I don't know if you guys saw that scrolling. Let me see if I can make that happen again. So that actually scrolls down there. Um, but the uh, clock up there and date up there is gonna take some getting used to um, for with Android for as long as I can remember that date has been up there in that top right corner. <laughs> now they're moving it over here to the left. And this I think has a little bit to do with, uh, the notch support that is, uh, that is, uh, incoming. So, um, battery percentage up there as well. Um, you'll also notice that a single swipe, you can't get into your settings like you can over here. So a single swipe, you know, you have that setting shortcut and then an additional swipe down. I don't know if that will change. Uh, I hope that it does, but in order to get to settings, you have to swipe down again. And then there is that setting. So speaking of settings, you'll just notice in here, everything looks um, a little more polished. You could even call a little Samsung esque. We've got colors now to, uh, address each category. Um, this area up here just looks a little more polished as well in terms of those suggestions for you. I'm just going to go ahead and exit that out, but you can still search through settings or you can just scroll, scroll through. And again, there are plenty of fun little colors here. What I'm going to show you though, is if I dive into system 
and go into advanced because we always do this. It is running Android P, but if we go into about phone, they've changed this layout a little bit. Um, you can see though, I am running Android P there. There's an advanced section that dropped down some more stuff, including build number. So you can see it's P preview one. Um, and if we tap on Android P that brings up our security level, baseband, kernel, and build number again in sort of this pop-up window. And then if I start tapping on Android P up there, then I get to that Easter egg, which you guys are often fans of. Um, it doesn't seem to really change much. I can't long press to get into anything else. If I tap, it doesn't seem to want to do anything. Um, but if you do tap on that, it does kind of change each time you do it, usually with some kind of crazy, wild, psychedelic color scheme going on. Um, and I've seen blues and reds and there's like a Christmas version. So they do continue to change. If we find out there's a deeper Easter egg in here, we will certainly let you know. But a long press really doesn't seem to do much like it used to um, in the past. So that's kind of it in terms of what we're noticing up front. Oh, there is one little trick I wanted to show you. And, and I can't tell if this is only an Android um only an Android P thing or not, but here is the Android messages app. And you can see, I sent myself a picture so you can tap on that picture and it pulls up that picture viewer, right? Um, if I go into multi window, so I have multi window open and let's say I'm looking up here. Uh, if I tap that picture actually opens it up down here in this bottom window, it doesn't do that in Android 8.1 with the Android messages apps. So I don't know if that's an update coming, but it's kind of cool that I can stay within this screen and but I it'll open if I'm in multi window a preview of that image in the bottom window and I can you know scroll around in here um, if I tap in there and go back that just goes away and takes me back to this screen so I've got this up and I'll show you again if I have something else down here um, but I want to look at this image it will pop that up down there so I don't know if that's a subtle tweak they've made that I just didn't realize but kind of a cool little thing we'll see if that gets adopted um, throughout additional apps because it's it's kind of handy if you're looking at something here that window doesn't pop up and cover it anyway just kind of a niche little thing there um let's go ahead and swipe that away and uh we'll pull back down and go into settings one more time there isn't a lot else to talk about here um if we dive into display though i do want to show you what it's going to look like when you have notches on phones so if we go down here there is a pixel device theme section down here and it says narrow display cutout, tall display cutout, wide display cutout. So if you wanna see what your phone will look like with a notch on it, your Android phone or develop, this is actually for developers to get their apps ready for it, but there you go. There is a notch and when you swipe down notifications, you can see this is just how it works. Everything's sort of separated. You have your clock and some of your settings over here. Um, and then you, I'm sorry, you have your battery and some of your settings over here. You have your clock and some notifications over here. Um, by swiping down on each side of this, nothing different happens. So that hasn't been implemented in case they are going to do that. Let me just show you um, a tall display cutout, what that looks like. So that drops down and covers the full notification bar there. And you can see how it's dealing with notifications in a way over there. Let me just see if I can add one to it and see what happens. So we've added one to it. And uh, now you get a small, let me zoom in here a little bit. So now you got clock and then it shows you that you have multiple notifications with a little three dot there. And then here are your settings over here. So you start pulling that down and you can start seeing what's going on there. Is it just me or did the color change in here? They were blue, now they are a greenish color. I'm wondering if that has to do with battery percentage and that is something that we are going to pay attention to, but these were blue, now they are a greenish color. Um, we're gonna figure out why that is, but that is very, very interesting. So uh, anyways, that is how it's handling when you have multiple notifications that, are, that there isn't enough room for up next to a notch. Um, and then finally, I'll just show you narrow notch. There's so many different notches. And that's what a narrow notch, so you can see one extra icon is now showing along with those three dots. Uh, if you tap on that, it just kind of drops down and shows you a preview. So uh, very interesting stuff um, in terms of that. I, I, you know, I don't really care about notches. I just wish people wouldn't copy Apple's version of it, um, but it is what it is. We know that that, that, is, uh, that is a thing. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is if we change wallpapers, dive in here and uh, we'll just find something really dark. Uh, we've got the same wallpaper switch going on where uh, if you're using a dark wallpaper, the theme switches to dark. So you can see there, switches to dark. So again, there isn't a dark or um, light theme that you can manually toggle to without doing um, that right there by just changing the wallpaper. We swipe up, you can see that's dark as well. 
Um, and if we dive into settings, you can see they stay light. So it's really just that shade goes dark as well as your app drawer, but it's not like a system wide dark theme. Um, finally, I'll just show you from the lock screen. We just double tap here. And, uh, this is kind of the UI you get. It's very similar to what it used to be, except there are rounded corners around everything. So, um, I think that's mostly it. Of course, while I was in the middle of editing that, I found some more stuff and also realized I forgot to talk to you guys about sounds. But uh, speaking of sounds, if you adjust volume, you'll notice that volume slider has changed now. So volume up and down actually moves that up and down with your slider. Rather than that being that overlay, that horizontal overlay that adjusted volume, it now pops out from the side and you can scroll this up and down to adjust volume. You can um, mute volume by tapping on that button. Um, there's also this media button up here and I, it's not working at this time from what I can tell, but it says media output and it's searching for devices and it says no devices found. So it's looking like Android P is going to have better or more fine tuned volume controls over media devices around you, whether that's Bluetooth devices, potentially Google home or something like that. Again, I can't confirm that because it's not showing up, but it is searching for devices to allow me to control their volume and then saying no devices found. But you can see you can adjust that um, to mute or silence. There's just a toggle here to go from vibrate to mute to ring. Um, and then speaking of that, if we, uh, well, I'll show you that one more time. So if I long press, and speaking of that, if we dive into sounds, and I may pull these for you all to download, but there are some new ringtones and as well as notification sounds. Um, this one's fun. I believe these are new. I, I don't remember these um, being here before. Like, hey. Hey. Great notifications on, right? So I, I think these are all new. I'll, tr I'll try to pull these and post them up for you. Uh, so again, volume has changed to this menu. And it may look familiar because in Android 8.0, we got a new power reset or restart menu um, that pops out from the side for power off and restart. And you'll notice they added a screenshot. So if you want to take screenshots, you can obviously do volume down and power. That will always take screenshots. Um, if you don't remember to do that, you can hold power in and then tap on screenshot. And that will take a screenshot. So that stuff's tweaked as well. Um, I did want to show you, I have the notch up because I was playing with the notch some more. And this year, this is going to be one of the downsides of the notch, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm in um, Google Photos looking at a screenshot. And you can see I can't see everything because there's a notch on my phone. It's hiding it. So if I want to see it in full screen, watch what happens. I tap and it shifts down. I now get black bars on the side. So this is, more, this is, this is some of the problems with everyone adopting these notches. Um, if I tap on that again, you'll see it goes back and I get that overlay with my um, status bar. But if I want to go full screen because there's a notch, it has to drop down. And now I just get all this pretty black area. So uh, that's notch life for you. Um, anyways, I believe that's it. This is a long video, but there's actually quite a bit of stuff in here to talk about. Uh, if we find more, we will let you know. We are Droid Life. Peace.